Can we talk about Quinn's? Yeah, can do, yeah. Yeah. I've not heard you speak about this subject. Bloodgate. I, I, I'd love to talk to you about it. Yeah. I know time's gone by. I, I, I know it's old news, I but I think people would love to hear. Yeah, but you probably won't get it. anything out of me. I, 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 the, the, the only thing I'll say is, is um, it was a bad idea. Um, mm. It was a wrong idea. Uh, and when your gut and instinct says don't do it, you shouldn't have done it. And then the cover up afterwards was probably the worst thing out mm. there. And and so whichever way you look at it, it was is like the perfect storm which just erupted into this almost like an atomic bomb of of furor and everything. And it just should never have happened because uh, being at the helm, I, I should have just said no. It's not going to happen. Mm. One of the saving graces was that social media wasn't as prevalent there. I don't think people were talking about it on Bebo or MySpace. You know, it's everything's trial by social media at the minute. But I, I mean, I went back and looked. I, I remember when I was playing back then. I remember it being a thing, but I also knew that many other teams were doing it, so I didn't really see it as a as a thing. Which yeah, but it's irrelevant, isn't it? Uh, you, you know, you have a choice whether to do it or not, and and uh, and we as a team and I sort of sanctioned it and and allowed it to happen and or and, and was part of it and and I shouldn't have done. And as I said earlier on, your gut instinct is to say no and uh, and you should always follow your gut in- instinct in situations like that. And and that was probably you know one of the biggest regrets of my sort of coaching, well, probably the biggest regret of my coaching career, how that unfolded and and everything. But you know that's life. You've got to learn from it. And I've learned a huge amount from it. Um, I wouldn't say you know I've got. Uh, well, you do have regrets, but you know, in your time out, you, 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 you learn to do other things and survive in a different way. And uh, so, yeah, it was very different. Just for the listeners, can we go through what it was? Because people might be listening to it being not, you know, I know, I know you don't <laughs> just, want. Just, I know. No, listen, I'm, I'm not going to go into it, but only because of, because it's unfair on other people. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, if it was just me, I, I, I wouldn't have a problem. But yeah. There's so many other people involved um, that I, you know, I'm not. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Do you had a three year stand down period? Was that yeah? Was, did do, was yeah. it was it three years? It was three years. And what did yeah. you do during them three years? Oh, uh, I spoke at a few dinners. Um, uh, did a bit of uh, uh, introducing for for an insurance company, Bollingtons. Uh, very kindly took me on, and uh, and I turned my hand to anything. Mm. And and it, and it was fascinating that first of all the the furor of surrounding Bloodgate. I, you know, on the, on the day that I got uh, I got sentenced, I think it was the day I got sentenced. It was the same day that the guy who'd blown up, allegedly blown up the the Lockerbie bomb, was released from from jail. Yeah. And and I got two front, you know, the front page and the inside page of the of every daily. And this guy was probably three or four, and um, three or four pages in, and and the, the the you know the significance of one versus the other. One's a sporting thing versus. You know, people's lives it's it's amazing you know or it goes to show what a sporting nation we still are i suppose and the importance to us yeah do you think that cost you opportunities at england i was never going to look at england anyway so mm. but, um opportunities in terms of quins but you know we'd finished second that year uh and it took them a year to regroup and then they finished first you know two years after that so um yeah, a little bit in terms of lost time for Quinns as a, as a team, and and the disappointment of of the, and the trauma that a lot of the people went through who were there uh, for that following season. Uh, but at the same time, it probably made them the boys a lot closer, which I think was a uh, is a good thing. So if if, it's, if you can have a good thing that comes out of it or a positive, so so yeah. Um, you know, for me, it, you know, it's a learning curve, and you learn from it. And would I do it again? Definitely not. Mm. I think from the outside, looking into that, but also the Saracen stuff that happened, and whether people like this or not, especially where we are in life now, is drama builds drama and builds a yeah, story, right, builds totally. a narrative, and builds profile around it. Like, yeah. and good or bad. You know, we always say as young lads, if you get in the paper, then yeah, that's a good, regardless there's, of what it there's, is. There's no such, new, <laughs> such thing as bad news, yeah, is there? So, exactly. So yeah. there is a part of that. And yeah. I know you've never really sp- spoke about it. It's different for me speaking about Bloodgate or Saracens because it never affected me in any way, both financially, uh, emotionally, yeah. 
my life wasn't affected, but I know there's a lot of people involved in both of them situations. When I speak about it tongue in cheek, there'll be yeah. sort of deep rooted hurt that's changed, changed their lives. Yeah, it, it will have done, but your life changes direction all the time, and and it's you know you 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 experience different things all the time. It, it's it's very interesting that you know we're talking about um, certainties and everything else like that the other day, and, and 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 all through my career, you've never had a certainty. You know, whether it's be as a policeman, you knock on a door, you don't know what's going to be, you know, who's going to open the door. And uh, you know, you go into an accident. Is it a fatal accident? Is it a serious injury, or just a, a you know, all these sort of things? You don't get a standard, a, a structure to your life. And 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 in rugby, you, you never got that as well because at the weekend everything was, you know, everything throughout the world was, week was built up to a weekend, but you were never guaranteed a win. And you had the the, the emotions of the, the highs and the lows of of, of, a, of of a victory versus a loss. So I've never had that sort of stable platform of going to work throughout the week and then just shutting up shop at five o'clock on a Friday afternoon, uh, cutting the lawns on a Saturday morning, washing the car on a Sunday, and then going back into work on a Monday. It's all always been a roller coaster for me, mm. and I've loved it and I've sort of thrived on it. But yeah, it's that that that's been my life. Yeah, in them three years though, you must have been down, like as in dark down. Yeah, um, you know, it happened. I can't remember what day of the week it happened on. The next day, I, um, I sat down. I was moping, moping about, and the very next day after that, there was a knock at the door at nine o'clock, and um, and the ninety-five year old neighbour was there, and he said, "Do you mind if I come in, Dean?" I said, yeah, "Not a problem." Sir. And he got a little Tesco carry bag, and. Um, and he, he he sat down at the table and he said, I don't want a cup of tea. He said, I've got these. And he got a pack of four Tetley's Bitter. And he said, should we crack one open? And we cracked it open. And then he told me his life story about how in World War II he, was, he fought in the Battle of Monte Cassino and then he was captured by the Germans and then he escaped and his journey back to, to the UK and everything else like that. And he took him about an hour to tell me. And then at the end of it, he said, uh, tell me about your problems. <laughs> And I went well, well, not quite as bad as yours. <laughs> and it, and when you you think about it, and 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 you put things into perspective, you, you know, my problems were nowhere near as bad as his, and his ex, his experiences and uh, difficult experiences far exceeded anything that I've come across. And he just he just sat down there and just said, look, whatever you do, going forward, you know, just keep your chin up, and you'll come out the other side. And you know, sure enough, you do. You're telling me you didn't wake up the next day having drank a can of Tetley's that was probably warm without a headache and without feeling. If I'd awful. had 21, I probably would have done. <laughs> Absolutely. 